नमस्तुते प्रभु श्री सूर्य नारायण भगवान की जय ओम दधी शंकर तुषाराभ शिरोदार नम संभव नमामी शिशिरम सोमा शंभुर मुकुट भूषण श्री चंद्राय नमो नमः श्री चंद्र देवताय नमो नमः ओम धरणी गर्भ संभूतम विद्युता समप्रभम कुमार शक्तियम तम मंगल प्रणमा प्रिंसो श्री मंगल देवता भगवान की जय ओ प्रियंकु कर काश्याम रूपेण प्रतिमं बुधम सौम्यम सौम्य गुणूपी तम तम बुधम प्रणमा प्रिंसो श्री बुध देवता की जय ओम देवाषीना चुरु कांचन संदीप बुद्धिभूतम त्रिलोकेशम तम नमा बृहस्पति श्री बृहस्पति देवता की जय हेम कुंड मृणालाभम दैत्याराम परम गुरु सर्वशास्त्र प्रभक्तारम भार्गव प्रणमा श्री शुक्ल दिवता की जय दीवादस्माभास रविपुत्र यमाग्रज चाया मारकंड संभूत नमा शर पृथ्व श्री शनि दिवता की जय शिभूमिशु गुरुष्ट शुक्र शनि राहु केवे ग्रहाशाक्ति
सुमिरो तो ही सुमिरत ज्ञान बोधि देहो मोहि सूर्य देवता सुमिरो तो ही सुमिरत ज्ञान बोधि देहो मोहि ज्योति स्वरूप बादो बलवाना तेज प्रताप है अग्नि समाना तुम आदित परमेश्वर स्वामी अलक निरंजन अंतरयामी परमी नाई ज्योति करलीला करम सुरंदर परम सुशीला ज्योति कला तेजराशी जगतपते आनुकंपाय मध्य गृह नमस्तुते ब्रह्मा मुरारी स्त्री पुराधकारी भानुशशि भौम सतो भुनश्च गुरुश्च शुक्र शनि राहु केतु सर्वे ग्रह शांति करा Birth after birth, may we forever be born as this humble devotee of yours, with our love and faith for your lotus feet, continuously increasing life after life for every successive birth. To your feet, O Lord, we contemplate upon thee. These few moments of praise, seeking your blessing, then asking that you destroy all sources of negativity and all distractions of the mind. Om Karpur Gauram Karunavakaram Sansar Saram Om Namah Shivaya Guru Mahapati 
शंकर भगवान की जय तो भगवान शिव भाई लिंगम फर्स्ट यू टेक द रेसिटेशन द लिंग मस्तकम ऑल बाय भजन द भगवान शिव
uh, welcome all of you here this morning. Uh, you, many of you are here. Uh, you're here in addition to worship the Lord. We're here to celebrate a very important uh, milestone in the life of our dear Bahinji Davina. And as you all know, uh, a couple of days ago, she celebrated her 65th birthday, 65. When you put your hands together, you have the hand here is an indication of how much she's loved and respected here in this community and how she means to us here this moon here as well because she could have chosen to celebrate this party anywhere else and in any other manner but she chose to do so right here in this morning at the church of what people now I was not going to be here in the country for this this week and next week but I thought it was her birthday she told me I didn't want to disappoint her so I had to be here uh, like all of us who are here to witness and celebrate with our Bahenji. Now, you'll hear more about her uh, because uh, when I look into this crowd, I see so many faces from the Sukebo. So that tells me that she's from the Sukebo as well. And Vish, uh, Sukebo is one of the most beautiful parts of Ghana. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can't compare Kanji with the Sukebo. Very good for prizes like that to me. Yeah, so, and what's so funny that probably she doesn't know as people. You never hit it, so. Yeah, once. <laughs> so, our Benji came from, we talked about Blackwater, the best way to Blackwater is born. It is okay. And the river is available. The natural beauty, isn't that so? How many of you know as people? So beautiful. I am from that far from that area myself, so. And, uh, yeah, so yeah, the I mean, back bench is there when it's people. And Minvis is also from that area. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, this is a great day we get to the celebrate. Like we normally do here, uh, whenever there's a birthday celebration, we must sing the birthday celebrant, a nice, happy birthday magic. And who else but Babuji, Babuja, because a guy this can do it, a trained agent can do it. You gotta come, sir, now. So, give Babu a nice round of applause. So, Wendy, this is for you. I well, wish you a happy birthday today. Uh, happy 65th, and this uh, is for you. And your special day.
that up quickly and we can leave. continue the program at this point. So devotees, once again, a uh, special welcome to all of you here. Those of you joining us for the first time. Thank you. 
when she's chosen to sit here at the feet of God and to extend to the Lord her gratitude because she first and foremost realizes that it's by the grace of God that she said she's arrived at this important milestone of 65. I remember when she celebrated her 60th with Ayashna, uh, and she thought that was a big one, but this is a bigger one, 65. And there are many more to celebrate. Because when you celebrate in this month, the Lord, of course, is he's, he's watching, He's blessing you, and he's, he's the one responsible for giving you extension in life. Many times when you think of life, you don't have too much more to go, and many more years more to live, you trust in the Lord, the final decision rests in his hand. He decides. He decides how long we go to work for. You know, people ask the fortune teller, say, how long we going to live? <laughs> Tell me how long I'm going to live when I'm going to die. Well, you live until you die. <laughs> but nobody can actually predict with accuracy uh, when you're going to die. Uh, the Lord knows. Only he knows. Sometimes you're the brink of death. You're suffering from terminal disease. And when the doctor says you're going to die, when everybody thinks you're going to die, and the Lord says, no, you're not going to die, the final decision rests with him. He decides. He can override any other decision that anybody else can make on your behalf. He pulls you out of a coma when there was no hope for you. He brings you back to your feet. He brings you back to life because that gift of life came from him in the first place. He was the one who infused life into this body. And when this soul leaves his body, it goes back to him. So he decides. Now, his blessing is important. But besides the blessing also, we have important responsibilities. We are responsible for our quality of life. Uh, he gives you life. He gives you the car, for example. You're responsible for the maintenance of this car. You're responsible for the quality of life. You're responsible, you decide, you choose whether you're gonna live a stressful life, a stressed out life, or you choose whether you're gonna live a happy life or not. The decision lies with us. And we spend the entire lifetime complaining, this is not right, that is not right, I don't have this, I don't have that, I want to achieve this, I want to achieve that. And your entire life is wasted away, stressing and stressing and stressing. And you miss the point of living. And that's the bottom line. A lot of people who are exiting the world, if you are to interview them, question them, well, they do have a good life. And if they're honest enough to tell you, well, you know, uh, there's so many things I wish I could have done, so many things that I left pending, un incomplete. If I wish I had more time. You had all the time in your world, you should not have to do it because you have to procrastinate. See, a procrastination the thief of time. And you procrastinate and procrastinate and then you miss the point of living. Now, I just spoke to this Bhaji here, Babula, and he just told me something that really inspired me. In fact, I, I applauded him for that. I said, you're looking so young. Are you looking so healthy? He said, guess how old I am? I said, in my mind, I didn't tell him, I said, probably you were in your 60s. He said, I'm 75. I'm still kicking. I said, what do you kick? He said, I'm kicking into the gym every day, four days a week. He goes to the gym. And I've known this man for more than almost 30 years. I, I did his mother shot about 30 years ago. Remember that? And he didn't look any different. He doesn't look any different than he looked then from now. And the reason for that is because he knows how to balance his life. He knows what it takes for someone to, to enjoy health and longevity. The decision with us, my dear brothers and sisters, Lord Krishna says in these two words of the Gita, that a productive life is not for someone who eats too much or eats too little, not for someone who sleeps too much or sleeps too little, but for someone who knows to strike the right balance in your life. Now, it begins with eating and sleeping, or still eating and sleeping habits. But we can extend that to other areas of life as well. You can extend that to work. We must know how much, how much is enough when it comes to working, and how much you know when it comes to resting as well. You have to balance your life. If you can live your life in moderation, then not only 65, you will celebrate 95, you will celebrate 105 in good health. That is exact, the decision is up to us. But we spend our life trying to grab and grab and grab and grab because we simply don't know how much is enough. You wonder to how much is enough, you don't know how much is enough. So you think the whole world of wealth is, that will be enough. And you get a whole world, you still want more. So a happy person is not who has a lot of money. A happy, because richness doesn't signify, doesn't translate into happiness. Poverty either isn't happiness. What is happiness for you, brothers and sisters, is a contented spirit. If you're a contented person with however little you have, 
or how much you may have, then you're a happy person. The Lord sent us into this world for all of us to lead happy lives, to lead fulfilling lives, to lead productive lives. It doesn't take a lot for you to live a happy life. It doesn't take a lot for you to live to lead a fulfilling life. What it takes is a contented spirit for you to be grateful each day for whatever the Lord blesses you with. If you are a true devotee of God, if you are truly attached to the Lotus feet, if you have a permanent relationship with Him, then you need not fear at all whether your needs can be met. Because our Krishna promises us in chapter 9 of the Bhagavad Gita, He says, He who thinks of me with a disinterested spirit, then you do things for the Lord. If you think of Him always and you sing His praises, you worship Him, then in return, He's going to do two things. The two things He's going to do for you encompasses your entire life. Number one, He says He's going to take care of all your needs. And number two, He's going to bring you full security. He's going to protect you. Now you have, don't dismiss these words lightly. If you have somebody like the Lord who promises you, that's going to take care of your needs, all your needs. Then first of all, before he takes care of your needs, he must know what your needs are. And he knows exactly what you need. And he knows how much you need. You may not know how much you need. You may not know how little you need. He knows. And he's going to fulfill those needs. Then you rest assured that there's nothing to fear anymore. If you're going to take care of your needs, then he says, I'm going to bring you full security. I'm going to give you my full protection. So you know this divine umbrella of the Lord is sheltering you wherever you go. And whatever you do, then what need is there for you to fear? Because you know He's there. He listens to your prayers. He listens to your petitions. And He knows what is good for you. He's going to deliver to you what is good for you, what is beneficial to you. 65 years of age allows you, according to the Hindu tradition, uh, to now be part of this third stage of life, which is called the Van Prest Ashram. Now, in these parts, in America, in other Western countries, 65 years, years of retirement. That's when you get Social Security and so on. And you can enjoy your benefits, right? Not so for many people, because I question some people, well, you're 70 years, you're still working? Oh yes, why are you not retire? What am I going to retire and do? That's the question they ask me. I'll be bored at home, what am I going to do? I'll get sick. I'll, there are things you can do. You can go to the gym four times a week. You can go five days a week. But besides that, come to the spiritual gym. That's what retirement is about. Spend those years from that point onwards until the Lord said come home. Spend those years, beautiful years. Let them be the best years of your life. Spend them in company of the Lord. Then you have much more time because the kids are grown up. They have a life of their own independent. They can fend for themselves. You have a lot of free time on your hand. And that's the time when you spend, spend time with the Lord. Doing community work. Doing a lot of good things before you have to leave. You don't know how many more years you have after that. We don't know. That's a big question, Mark. But you do know you're still alive. And you have time on your side. You have health on your side. This is the time from the third stage of life we are called the Van Prest Ashram, where you gradually detach yourself from the materialistic attachments of the world and you attach yourself to the Lord, to all spiritual activities. And then you will fulfill the purpose of coming to the world. Because when you question it, I would ask you the question what is your purpose in life? And people will have different answers. Say, so, well, I want to get rich, I want to own so many real estate. I want to drive a nice car. I want to have a fat bank account and all these things. We're thinking along the material lands. Now those things, it's good to be ambitious in life. It's good to have things in life because it's one of the four Polish arts we have. The other part is calm and motion. Art means accumulation of wealth, calm means enjoyment. These are things that we're entitled to because it's ordained, mandated by God. But that is not the purpose of life. Those things, all the things you manage to acquire, these material acquisitions in life, should only propel you to live a spiritual life. You should use all of these to aid you in your pursuit of moksha, which is liberation, or final emancipation, or, or freedom from this, the fetters of, of birth and death. So Bhagavan Krishna is telling us that we must recognize as we age the rhythm of life, and the rhythm of life changes as we grow older. This rhythm changes because you're not a young person anymore. 
you're not a, you're not 10, 15 years old teenager. You're not in your early 20s. So you pass that stage. Now, this is the age of maturity. The age should be a spiritual maturity as well, whereby you spend uh, time with the Lord. So, in saying these words to Arjun, that a productive life is not, is not for someone who eats too much or eats too little, one who sleeps too much or sleeps too little, one who indulges too much or indulges too little. Now, we have to again examine these words of Bhagavan Krishna. What he's saying here is you have to avoid the extremes. The Gautam Buddha was the son of the king, the tribal king. And he was a young man, he was a happy young man. In fact, when he was growing up, his father made sure he didn't want him to be exposed to what happened in the outer world. So he kept him uh, quarantined within four walls of his palace so that he would not see what is happening outside the outer world. And one day, he happened to sneak out and he wanted, he was curious to know what happened out there. And what he saw is what is referred to in Buddhism as the four sides. He saw a sick person, a diseased person. He saw a dead person. He saw a beggar. And he saw some a monk, someone who was meditating. In other words, he saw old age, he saw disease, he saw a mendicant, and he saw poverty. Now, these things moved him because actually when he was born, there's a prediction, the astrologer made a prediction saying that this boy is going to rise up to become, either he becomes a, a great monk or he becomes a great king. So the father wanted him to become a king instead of becoming a monk, leave the home and go become uh, renunciate. Now this moved him so much that he eventually one night he sneaked out of his palace and he left the family behind and he went in pursuit of a path to moksha, to liberation. Initially, when he started his journey, he began to fast. And this fasting brought him to the brink of death then he realized that this extreme was no good. That taught him a lesson. The lesson was, you have to balance it. You have to find that balance in your life. And then he went into meditation, as you know, to read about his life until he attained that nirvana, that state of enlightenment. And the enlightenment, of course, what people need to free ourselves from mundane existence. Now, when we approach the evening state of our lives, like, like in the 60s, then we should seek more diligently the spiritual wisdom. The spiritual wisdom, seek these things that are going to benefit us in the year after. You know that at 65, in your 60s, in your 70s, you're much, much closer to death than you were when you were in your teens and your twenties. There's no question about it. You're much closer there. You have to prepare, my dear brothers and sisters, for the inevitable, for the hereafter. If death catches you unprepared, then there'll be serious regrets. So Bharatadukpawahi Sira Turi Turi Pachikai Kalahi Karmahi Ishwarahi Mitya Bhushakai. The Ramayan says. Then we beat our heads and regret. Then you begin to point fingers. So you want to blame time. You didn't have enough time. You're going to blame fate or destiny. And then we even blame Kalahi Karna Ishwari. You blame the Lord also. The Lord was so unjust to you. Now we are the architects of our own destiny. We are responsible for who we are, for where we are, and for where we're going after we leave this world. Each birthday is an opportunity for all of us to do some stop taking, to do some introspection, to take a spiritual inventory of our lives as to our state of uh, being, where we are, 
look back at life. At 65, you've had a good chance to look back at the 65 years you travel. Look back at this journey. Uh, and then you examine where you are now and then look ahead. You see, <clears throat> when you, you're driving in a car, for example, the car has a rear view mirror. Now, if you keep looking at this rear view mirror all the time, you're going to crash. That rear view mirror is used to glance at only only glance a few a second, two seconds. Because by glancing at that review mirror, it helps you on your journey forward. So looking back at the past, that in itself, looking at mistakes of the past, or the good things you did in the past, those memories of the past, can prepare you to do better things ahead. So when you look straight ahead at you, the glass you look through is much bigger than the review mirror. That wheel is much bigger than the review mirror. And it helps you to keep stay focused so that your journey will be a successful and a safe one. Now, living a balanced life simply means you can't live in the past and you can't live in the future because neither the two actually exist practically. The past is gone, the future is yet to come. What you have is the present. What we're living is it now. You've got to live in the present tense. Live life in the present tense and live your life to the fullest. Now, you know the things that make you happy. You know the things that uh, gives you pleasure, that gives you joy. But there's nothing that will give you the greatest happiness and then sitting in your prayer room, sitting before the Lord, coming to the Monday, singing His praises, do an act of kindness to someone, helping someone in need, stretching your hand out to those less fortunate ones. These are the things that yield the greatest rewards. These are the things that bring you a lot of satisfaction. The things, the things of the world may gratify, but they never satisfy. They gratify, it's temporary gratification, but never give you permanent satisfaction. You can't get permanent happiness out of them. So why pursue something that is transient, something that is like a mirage in the desert that really doesn't really exist? In of a temporary nature. You gotta pursue that which is permanent, that which is enduring, that which is everlasting, that which is going to benefit you not here alone, but more importantly, when you cross over to the other side. And that is the reason why all of us have come into the world. Stress is a killer. And most of us, we choose to stress. You said, how do you choose to stress? The things just happen. Well, things happen. That is true. Things happen suddenly. How you deal with what happens will make a difference. Ten percent of the things that that supposed to, that, that happen to you are supposed to happen. Ten percent supposed to happen. The other ninety percent will deal with that ten percent. You can take it in strides. You can comprehend what has happened. You understand it well. You know how to deal with it. You move on. Someone who is very near and dear to your heart dies. Someone very close to you dies. You say you can't get worse than that. You can choose to grieve from now until you die. That death can cause your death also because you stress about it. You sink with depression, suicide, all these things. You simply die behind that person who died. Or you can come to understand it as the will of God. The person's time has arrived. He must go. Come to terms with it and you move on. How you deal with it is what makes the difference. In life, there is gain and loss. You don't gain all the time, you lose all the time. Gain and loss is part of life. You gain money, you lose money. You gain properties, you lose properties. You gain a life, you lose a life. These things are all part of life. How you how you manipulate them, how you deal with them is what makes a difference. If you want to live a healthy life with your brothers and sisters and a productive life, then you have to rise above these, these dualities of life. Lord Krishna says in the Gita, chapter 12. That the man who is saved is his enemies and friends, who behave the same in honor and disgrace, who takes suk and duk alike, that man is a happy person. He is dear to me. Now that is easier said than done. Because as human beings, we tend to react, we tend to overreact as well. But if you can find that balancing point in your life, my dear brother and sister, that equilibrium, 
If you can find that, that is a starting point to not only your happiness here in the world, but eternal happiness. And that's the reason why we're all sent here as human beings into the world, as simple as that. So these uh, opportunities of us celebrating these birthdays, uh, we must take an example from our wedding here this morning. When you have the next birthday to celebrate, celebrate it in a hall of this nature. Where right before you is the Lord. And there's everything to gain from this kind of celebration, none to lose. The other kind of celebration. I'm not saying there's everything to lose, but what I'm saying is nothing to gain. If you get a temporary moment of pleasure, you're not gonna, you're really right there. not going to do any good to you, any benefit to you. I'm going to just get you sicker the next day. So, Mahindji, really we want to thank you for uh, this initiative of choosing to celebrate your birthday. And I know you won't celebrate any other way. And knowing you, knowing your heart, such a uh, spiritual uh, tendency that you have, you will choose to celebrate this month. So, we want to wish you, on behalf of all of us here and the rest of your tribute family, a happy 65th birthday. We look forward that when you turn your numbers out, so whatever numbers you celebrate with us, I promise you that we're not going anywhere, we're going to be here to, to celebrate with you 105. <laughs> Uncle Jai will be around. Uncle Jai will be too. He's only 18, 81. So um, he said, when you reach his numbers, you don't see too well, even though you see he use glasses. So actually, what he, what he, when he looked at, what he's seeing is the one in front of the eight instead of the eight in front of the one. So he looked at his numbers, one in front of the eight. He said, "Wow, I'm 18." So he starts feeling like an 18 year old. And, well, it's good. To, it's good to be young and be healthy. But my dear brothers and sisters, in conclusion, again, to wrap up what we were discussing here this morning, uh, it is up to us. It's in our hands. Uh, how you treat life, how life treats you, how you treat life. What you put into it, you're going to get out of it. Now, there's a lot of gym around this place here. I'm going to, you know, the advice I'm giving you, you have to pay some therapist $250 per session or five for to give you the same advice. You see? So you're getting it for free. So take it. Sometimes when things are for free, they have no value. This has a lot of value. I see this behind Rani because she lost some weight. And that's a good thing. We do the right thing. Now I go to the gym too. I was in Florida, I went to the gym there almost every day. The gym in Florida. I don't go to the gym to look good or to feel good. That is that comes with it, with it. That's it, the side effects of it. You go to the gym because you don't want to suffer. You try to avoid suffering. And this physical ailments in this body can bring out a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. You know, if young Raj were to appear before you and says, listen, I come to take you now. And you said, no, please give me some more time. And he said, look, you know what, all right, We'll make a deal here. I'm going to give you 20 years more. I can take you now or give you 20 years more. But these 20 years will be 20 years of intense suffering. A lot of suffering. Excruciating pain. Unbearable suffering. Choose now. You want to go now? Or you want to spend the next 20 years in bed suffering? What are you going to choose? Yeah. Right. Which means suffering is not a good thing. To avoid suffering, my brothers and sisters, you have to do the right thing. Eat the right food, exercise regularly. The doctors will tell you these things. Exercise regularly, take care of your body. This body, see this body as God's gift to you. This is God's gift. This is God's mandir, temple you have. The same way you're going to maintain your, your Monday, your temple, 
made to his body. The same kind of food you eat in the mandir, put the same kind of food in his body. The same kind of language, the same, whatever happens in the mandir, compare that to your body. This is a stomach like a hawankun. That's what it is. With the gastric fire and everything there in the ear, like a hawankun. Sattvic food is put in his body. I'll take my advice. Thanksgiving is coming. Have a vegetarian Thanksgiving. Or a vegan, whatever you want. The Neji said he would do that. <laughs> I told someone they're better if they're vegan, you know, turkey or they're going to sell. I said, What do you mean? They said they eat the turkey, they eat vegetables. They call it vegetarian turkey. <laughs> now that's being too smart. <laughs> my point is, my dear brothers and sisters, eat the right healthy food. Even vegetarian food also is in moderation. Don't think that is, that's, that's the solution. Because if you can't balance that also, you get a heart attack. Vishnu Ji will tell you that in the hospital there, a lot of our people there are vegetarians who die from heart disease. And they have patients with heart disease, they're vegetarian. You want to know how come? And because you can't balance it. So be very mindful of what you put into your body, your healthy exercise, and more important than everything else, pray. Pray is the key. Like the American Express card, never leave home without it. Every day, must say your prayer. Keep close to the Lord. Enjoy His protection. And my dear brothers and sisters, not only 65, but endless amounts of birthdays you celebrate now and for a lifetime to come. Let us start to listen
for the foreign trip and the year for me I appreciated very very much and definitely I was looking forward for six to five So which 
I did mine already. <laughs> and I gave her to the just the like jazz. Like yes, okay. the jazz. <laughs> and then for <Corky. laughs> Anyway, Padaji, thank you so much for all your advice. It was wonderful listening to you. I always come here now and again. Cash is my sister in law, Ursula. And um, I wish every one of you could have a good time. Eat right, as Padaji said. I don't know, I'm not one of them. <laughs> but I still keep up my time. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Let me listen to what you said. I just thought that every wife would like to have a husband like you. <laughs> because they can do whatever they want to do, they can do like, yeah. Including mine. Yeah. So, so where is he? Can you please stand? Can you please stand? Can you please stand here? Yeah. All these men want to know who you are. <laughs> are the ladies too? <laughs> For being so cooperative and so supportive uh, to your better half. It means a lot. It goes a very, very far away. And that is how uh, men should be. Ladies should have a voice also. They have some freedom too. Uh, so, that is one of them. Uh, we left the uh, go too long. We're gonna wrap it up here in a few moments. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, twelve o'clock already. Uh, so we have a couple people here to make a contribution and a uh, special request to put it. Harry Nancy is here, and uh, we ask to say give her blessings to our Nancy. Yeah, on her birthday. All the bandits, birthday devotee, brothers and sisters, all. <clears throat> I don't know how many of you saw the news where NASA captured an image of Surya Bhagwan smiling. You didn't? Better read Facebook a little more. <laughs> But we need that smile again this morning, especially for the Vina. So I'm being today the Sunday, the day of the sun. That's our work for you, Pastor Yamagwan, for his smile. Oh, Yan Mandalam Yan Maganan Paganyam. Try to get puja, trigger on my roof. Some of the days you may dip your roof. Pull out to Manta, Savito, Valinia. But the she said that you are 65. I think they say you become a senior citizen then. <laughs> when I just came, when we just came to this country, we were living in Washington, D.C. And one day my wife went down to the laundry room and she saw an old lady there folding her laundry. And she went up to her and said, can I help you? And the lady said, okay. And then the lady turned to her and asked her, but why did you volunteer to help me? Oh, and she made the mistake to say, well, because I saw you're an old lady. <laughs> <laughs> and this lady became so angry, she said, I may be a senior citizen, but not an old woman. 
to Delinia, I say that to you today. You may be a senior citizen, but not an old lady. And from what I know of you, you will always remain young and beautiful. Devotees, we who are blessed to be in this term must count ourselves as fortunate because Bhagwan Krishna says that he lives in our heart. He didn't only say it, he put it in writing, he gave us in writing, Ishwara Sarva Bhutanam. Bhagavad Gita, and it was reading all the time, chapter 18, verse 61. He says he is present in our heart. That's for us who are his special people. So a birthday puja is not an ordinary puja. It's a puja where the devotee give thanks to the Lord for being in her heart for 65 years and a plea to the Lord to continue Father being with me for many more years to come. And you know it's hard for Bhagwan Krishna to leave her because she is tied to Vishnu. <laughs> I could go on and on, but it's a time. But what I want to say, Panditji, Panditji mentioned earlier that he hasn't seen me in a long time. You know, Panditji, when old age step in? You're not old, you're senior. <laughs> Well, no, let's step in it. Holds you back a lot. But this manner makes, I always remember. I don't know if you can remember. I have a pleasant memory of this manner. About many, many years ago, it was Maha Shivratri. And the pundits of this manner were all busy. But did you ask me if I could come? Early in the morning. For people to Chahal Prasad at the Lingam. So I was here early, six o'clock. And throughout the day, devotees were coming and we were doing puja as she was there. And then when the evening came and Pandit came and the other Pandits came, I could have gone home. But Bhagwan Shiva kept me here. And I stayed here from 6 one morning until 6 the next morning. <laughs> Old age like I can do it now. <laughs> but what I also remember at the end of the Shivratri in the 6 o'clock morning, the ladies of the Bandir, they had hot parat, hot sada roti, and bhaigan choka for us upstairs. So this manner is very pleasant to my mind, but I always, I said, <laughs> Davina, happy birthday. Auntie is here and she asked me to tell you happy birthday. Ajijan Namadin, Tumkumu Bharatamu. Jai Hoba. Thank you, Baba Ji. Thank you very much.
I saw you come in here, um, and we welcome you. We welcome your smile. Uh, we welcome you with open hearts. And uh, you know, I must have to say, um, may your life be like arithmetic, joys added, sorrow subtracted, sympathy divided and love multiplied. Also, it is said that eyes are the windows of the soul. It is only when the lamp is lit inside, then the light shines out. Enjoy your youth, but don't forget to light that lamp of beauty within, which will glow brighter with the passage of time. So my dear Divina, happy birthday again. May you enjoy good health, happiness, prosperity, joy, and everything else that you wish for. I want to say, Brother Vishnu, uh, my husband is just like you. He allowed me to do anything that I would like to do. So thank you for being the backbone of um, our dear Divina. Um, put your hands together for Vishnu. Uh, Divina We had a long conversation. And we were speaking about Divina. And he said to me in one sentence. A lot of things were said. But in one sentence he said, Why should you really keep me busy? <laughs> so she keeps him very, very busy. And... Uh, he is a wonderful man to be kept busy by Javina. So give uh, Vishnu a big round of applause, please. Uh, they have wonderful uh, grandchildren, uh, beautiful uh, Sharon, keeping the family alive. And um, I know Sharon, when she was a, she was a little child, and she was dancing with the Nat Drive Center for the Performing Arts with all those beautiful ladies. Some of the mothers are here. It was absolutely beautiful. Still. And um, still. still, yes. And the, in fact, the last dance by the Nat Drive Center for the Performing Arts was right here. When all the uh, ladies who are now mothers and everything else, they came and they danced right here. So this mother has a history of, uh, as Pani Tari Nat said, of beautiful, beautiful things. Um, Sister Davina, I call her Sister Davina. She's an absolutely amazing person. She's been around various Mandirs and Sri Lakshmi Narayan Mandir. She's been there for many, many years, one of the original founders of that Mandir. And um, events happened and she gravitated at Traborti. And we welcome her with open arms at this Mandir. And since then, she's been a great resource at this temple, doing fabulous work always come up with ideas and suggestions. She's an ideas person, uh, which we admire very much. So I'd like you to give her a big round of applause for her 65th birthday. And uh, Sister Davina and I know with the help of the family, will go on and make great changes in the community in the future. Has to go so, that she's going on diamond, and you could see she's diamond all over. And the, who knows Davina? Every time you see her, she has that smile on her face. And every time you call she, she either have a puja house or a watch, a yajna house. Or a chamorti. A chamorti. She did all over. So this is what keep her going. Um, she, and she loves her family and she loves her friends. I'm in Florida and she's calling me. I'm like, everything okay? Yes, me just a check up on you. <laughs> That's how she is. Uh, we love you very much on behalf of myself and Suraj and all the rest of the family and the friends. We wish you a happy birthday. God bless you and many, many more to come. I know you're crazy about your grandchildren. And the song I'm going to sing is on behalf of your grandchildren and your children. We love you.
is Davina. It's your day, it's your big day. And um, you're looking gorgeous as usual. You always have this bright smile. Uh, many years ago, I met Sister Davina at Lachmi Mandir. And going from there to all the Mandirs we've been through in our life, this is my Mandir buddy. Then we move on to that Raj. We had the kids. And the first time that she really talked to me, she said, I can't believe your daughter named Davina and your son named Neil. Do you know I named Davina and my brother named Neil? So she said, from that day we bonded. Sister Davina, you're always a pleasant soul. You have not changed much. But Vishnu, my brother, you have to be careful with them pity people. <laughs> Trust me, I have a few of them. And then easy, so I don't know what they're saying about you, I know. But um, you're taking care of my sister very well. I made it very sure, Davina. We want to wish you a very happy birthday. And I'm going to call on my natural sisters because that's only fear. Of the, I see a few faces here. If you could come up because that's where we all bonded. Are they not here? My natural sisters? Come on, I see a few of them and they're not they're hesitant. There is, right? Are you guys shy? Shiva Hare Shiva Ram Sakhe Prabhu Trivita Pranivaran Hai Vibho Aaj Janeshwar Yadav Pahima Shiva Hare Vijayam Guru Mevaram Thank you very much, Pandaji. Divina, continue to remain the sweet person as you are, always shining with a beautiful smile. Oh, I forgot to call Sharon, but Sharon, you'll do yours at home, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you, Pandaji, for always entertaining us nicely, making us feel happy in this company. God bless you, Dr. Dalpa. My regards. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Yes, and our wishes. My humble Sitara. Just as I thought I would escape this, I put to the gallows. Anyway, where do I start with that? I I think it's safe to say, of all the people here, I, I know Dav the longest. Dav and I grew up together. We've been partners in crime in school. We're partners of crime here. Um, I'm glad to hear this morning I'm a Dav's confident, not that I have any, had any doubts about it. But Davina, you look absolutely ravishing, and it's not by chance. Like Pandit said earlier, put you in the house of God, and you're the happiest. Just a few days ago, Pandit had a yajna, and Davina got a fever. And Dav called me all very upset, because only one night of that yajna she was going to miss. I have a fever, you don't understand, I'm so upset, I can't go, but the children are say, yeah, okay, now. God knows your limitation. Take two Advil, go to bed, shred it out, tomorrow you go to the Ajna. She called me the next day. Oh, the fever is gone, I'm going to the Ajna. Okay, Dav, enjoy yourself. So you see, what you see here today, it's not a reflection of all the Hule or L'Oreal, it's what is inside of Dav. Dav came from a very, um, I would say, religious family. Her father belonged to the Roman Gold with my father. Her cha-cha was the custodian of the Mandiri Krista in Supero. So Dav grew up with this. So you know they say what you put inside is what you see outside? Well, I can tell you, it is because of the heart that Davina has. She might be feisty at times, but her heart is bigger than her mouth. Anything that Davina can do for you, regardless of what it is, I know, it has to be beyond what she can do, and that's, that's far-fetched. She will always tell you yes. So my dear Davina, I have the pleasure of wishing you the happiest of birthdays. You know in life, Sometimes you meet people and you say, why didn't I not meet her before? Or sometimes you say, why did I meet her? And sometimes you say, I hope to God, I meet this girl in every lifetime. Dove, 
May you live as long as you want. I never want as long as you live. Happy birthday, my sweet sister. Thank you very much, Lady uh, Irvati Sanvati. Happy birthday to you. Go 
another great year for you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Bad, bad is in the year. It's your birthday, so let me party. Let's gather to cut the cake. Cheers to your life. Let's celebrate. Happy birthday to you. Another great year for you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Got a rum and clap, clap, clap your hands 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 and clap, clap, clap. We pray for health, strength, and positivity. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.